here in about four or five minutes. But before we get started, I just wanted to uh, let you know a few things that are going on uh, and just remind you of uh, some things that we've got going on this week. And most importantly, uh, this morning, what God's going to do. Uh, I'm excited about what God's about to do. Uh, it would be easy to uh, look around at the circumstances that are surrounding us and become in despair and discouraged. But I've got good news for you this morning. God's still on the throne. Jesus is still interceding. Praise God. And I believe in for his power, his strength, his anointing to flow in us this last day. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Tonight, uh, everybody should know by now because I have talked about it till my tongue hurts. Amen. Uh, but we're encouraging you, please, to come out tonight and support uh, the ministry of Daystar. This is, uh, this is not as much about Jason Crabb as it is about Daystar. And we want to make a good showing. We've got uh, many people that have said that they're going to be here. And uh, uh, not real sure there's some uncertainty on the goal that we set as to what we're there. It's going to depend on the walk-ins. Uh, but I'm believing that God's just going to go ahead and meet the need. I've prayed for it, asked God about it. And uh, he said, if you pray and ask and believe, whatever you ask in faith sh shall be done. And so I've asked God to touch hearts of people. And uh, I was at church this morning, and they pushed it for us there. And so I'm just so thankful for the opportunity uh, to be able to come together tonight to worship God in song and in the Word. Uh, uh, as he's delivered before and uh, uh, last time he was here uh, we saw people saved and uh, we're just so thankful for that and we just want to continue to do that uh, just remember if you signed up to volunteer uh, try to be here uh, probably about 4 o'clock this afternoon because uh, people will start showing up at 4 o'clock we've got ushers assigned for every door uh, we want to make sure that people stay out of the front part of the building uh, and in the, the rooms up there, uh, ushers, if they ask about rest, restrooms, we want to direct them to our main restrooms. And we put a sign over the door so that they'll know what re where to go. Uh, also, that if they bring in small children, we also want to let them know that the nursery will not be manned, but it will be available. So if they want to uh, go into as a cry room or change diapers or whatever, that is also available for them in there. Uh, so we want to take care of that. We also have several folks that have called about handicap access. And so... Uh, Sister Tracy, get with some of the ushers, let them know how we're going to take care of them. Uh, we want to make sure that their experience is uh, uh, well received and uh, that God will just uh, minister to, to folks tonight. So we got a lot, we got a lot of things going on today. Uh, I need five or six men that can be here at 3 o'clock to help get the equipment and stuff loaded in here. If you can make it at 3, uh, you just swing by and help us get everything loaded in. It won't take 30 minutes or so. And if you need to run back home, you can do that. But I need about five or six men, please. If you could be here at 3 o'clock today to help with that, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you can do that, please uh, get with me after the service and let me know that you can come and help with that. And uh, I would uh, appreciate that. Uh, I think I took care of what I need to take care of for that. So prayer meeting tomorrow at 5. Listen, just because yesterday was the last day of prayer and fasting doesn't mean we've stopped praying. Uh, we're going to continue to pray. I won't, I, I'm praying that God would make this house a house of prayer. Because if God's people pray, things happen. John Wesley said God does nothing except an answer to prayer. If God's people don't ask, don't receive. You have not because you, you, you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. And so we're not stopping prayer, and we're going to place a lot of emphasis on prayer because it's going to take prayer to make the difference, especially in the days that are ahead. And I don't mean just Daystar. I mean what we've got going on in the world, in our community, in our, in our nation, in our state. It's going to take the power of prayer to change that. We, we need the hand of God to move again. So I encourage you to come and be a part of these prayer meetings as they move forward. As you already seen, we start at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings in prayer. I believe that we ought to do what we do, bathe in prayer, founded on prayer. Uh, the Moravian principle is no one works until somebody prays. So we want to come together and pray about these things that God is doing in us. We have our back-to-school community outreach. Uh, we're collecting uh, clothes, hangers, and school supplies. The target date is August 15th. So please, if you can help with that, uh, please do that. And um, we're looking forward to blessing some of the kids of our community, uh, what we got going on. Saturday is the motorcycle ministry yard sale. So uh, keep that in mind this coming Saturday. I think that's it. That's the symbol I'm looking for. God is good. Would you stand? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And as you're standing, let me remind you of a few things that we are praying about. Number one, we want to continue to pray. Uh, there, there's a lot of questions that God answered for me while we were on fasting and prayer, but there's some things that I'm still asking Him for. 
uh, some clarity and direction of certain things. And uh, so we want to make sure that uh, we continue to pray about that. Brother Jerry, uh, search is scheduled for Tuesday. Is that correct? So we're praying for him, that God would touch him and minister to him. We thank the Lord for Brother Jim coming through his surgery. Man, God is good. God is so good. And uh, if you haven't heard the report, uh, doctor called him yesterday and said, well, surgery did it. Everything's good. They tested about 40 different areas of what they took out and said everything come back clear. So we thank God for that. God is so good. God's still in the healing business. Amen. I, I love it when the doctor just sits there and goes, well, it, it went well, you know, and, you know, I like that. I, I like it when the doctor says, you know what, I know this wasn't all by me. I know that God had his hand in it. So I thank God for that, and we're going to continue to pray for that. We're praying for Brother Jerry that God would just go ahead and do the surgery. Praying for Tracy that God would just go ahead and do the surgery. And uh, we, we've already made deals with the surgeon that if the knot's not there, if she feels for it and can't feel where to cut, just don't cut. Just go ahead and just lift your hands and praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, we're believing for that. Continue to remember Johnny. Uh, Matt and Nancy's cousin, that God would touch him and minister to him. He is at home recovering, uh, that God would touch him. Cody Abernathy dealing with leukemia. Richard Grace is in the last days of renal failure. Uh, James Sherrill, this is uh, Brenda's uh, brother. I want to continue to pray for complete healing for him. Uh, Kayla uh, Maldonado uh, is dealing with double thyroid mass. Uh, my sister Carmen is dealing with spinal stenosis. And uh, we continue to remember Frank Oshetsky, who is dealing with cancer. And Kristen Lohman, uh, Salvation, Ronnie Barker, throat cancer. And Ronnie Robinson. Uh, most of all, we're praying for an experience with God, that God would just do a, a great work in his life. So lift up Ronnie, if you will, uh, that God would touch him and minister to him. we got some folks that are not with us this morning, and so we want to pray for them, that God would be with them and touch them and strengthen them. God knows why they're not here, but we're just believing and trusting for the Lord's will to be done. Now, uh, let me just go ahead and say this as we're praying. If some of you are saying, boy, I'm glad we're getting back to normal, go ahead and get that out of your mind. I'm not even looking for normal. Normal's not working. I want an experience. I want an outpouring of His glory. I want Jesus to be manifested. I want His presence and His power. I want the move of the Holy Ghost. I want God to move in such a dynamic way that we leave every time we come together. Wow, I've never seen it on that fashion before. I serve a God that can blow your mind. I serve a God that can do the supernatural. I serve a God that can do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or even think. That's the God that I serve. And so that's the God that I am imploring and pleading with to show up and minister in the service today. And I'm believing that with you. If you'll believe that with me, would you stretch your hands toward heaven and let's just surrender to him this morning. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. What a mighty God you are. Lord, before we come before you with any need or request, Father, we just want to declare that you are God and there is no other like you. Father, we just render praise unto you today, God. We exalt you today. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is your name in all the earth, God. Oh, we magnify the name of the Lord and we exalt your name together today. God, your name is great. Your name is great. Your power is great. Your deliverance is great. Your salvation is great. Your healing is great. And we thank you today for what you're doing and for what you're about to do, Father. We praise your holy name. Father, I pray today that we have an encounter in your presence, God. I pray today that we have a move of your spirit, God. I pray that you would demonstrate your power today. God, that we not come together with enticing words of men's wisdom, but today we come and experience the demonstration of your power. God, I bless your name today, Jesus. I ask you in the name of Jesus to move up on every need, every request. God, I want to thank you, Lord, for touching Brother Jim Peeler. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the honor. You're still the God who heals. You're still in the surgery business. You're still in the business where men and women do not even have to have chemo treatments and radiation treatments. We just remove the mass, and God, you begin to do the per perfect healing. And I thank you for that, Jesus. Lord, I'm not asking just for healing today, but I'm asking for miracles. God, that you will perform miracles in the life of your people, in the lives of these needs and requests, God, for every heart of every person that has walked into this door today. Let them leave with an experience, God, that no that they have been touched by you for Father one touch from you will make all the difference one touch will make all the difference God I thank you for that today we give you the glory we give you the praise we give you the honor for you are worthy of it all and we bless your holy name today and we just magnify you come on folks let the people of God rejoice in the house of the Lord today come on clap your hands all you people let us exalt his name together the Lord is great and greatly to be praised Come on, we're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's worth getting excited about. 
He's worth getting excited about. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name.
have saved me. You have saved me. And oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious, what a glorious name. I love to sing about that name. Come on, sing it again. Oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious way. sing it out. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. Yes. You restore every heart that is broken. You are life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only to you taking a breath not only do we breathe in air we breathe in you God we thank you 
that when we open our eyes in the morning, not only do we see the sunlight, but we see your presence. God, I thank you that when we lay down at night, we not only lay on our pillows, we lay in your presence. God, your presence is always with us, whether we feel it or not. And when we learn, God, to walk in your presence and to feel the presence that is ever there, that is when we will become one with you. God, so we thank you that you pour out your love in unexpected ways. God, when the birds sing, you show us your love. When the sun rises, you show us your love. When we hear the waves crash against the shore, you show us your love. When we see another friend smile at us, you show us your love because you are a great God. You are a loving God. When creation was made before you breathed life into the first day, you loved us. You had us on your mind. And God, we thank you that before time and space began, you were there. We thank you that before time and space began, you loved us. God, we worship you for your love is never ending and is never failing. And we say, great are you, Lord. We say, great are you, Lord. Yes, come on, declare it. It's your breath in our lungs. It's your breath in our lungs. God, we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. God, we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. God, we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we You're so great, you're so great. 
great Lord. Oh, and all the earth, they will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will we'll sing. sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will we'll sing. take a deep breath in and with that breath out I just want you to say hallelujah come on take a deep breath in and as you let it out I want you to say praise the Lord let everything that hath breath everything everything that hath breath if you are breathing in this house guess what you owe him you owe him and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Are you breathing? Come on, sing it with us. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out it's your breath, your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. Come on, every hand lifted. In your own way, praise him. In your own way, just adore him for a moment. Great are you, Lord. Nobody, nobody, nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody, nobody like you, Lord. You're so great and you're holy. There is no one beside. 
we sing great, great are you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. We sing great, so great are you, Lord. Have you ever found yourself in a storm? Be honest. You may be in this house this morning, and you may be in a storm. I can tell you the last couple months have been very stormy for me. Very stormy. And I ask God, why, why? Why now? Why this storm now? And I read a quote, I guess about a week and a half ago. You know how we're, we're, on, we're in a storm. We're on the, the, the sea of life. And waves toss us to and fro. Well, I read a quote that explained to me what my storm was about. And it said, I have learned to kiss the waves that slam me into the rock of ages. The rock of ages. In the storm, he's calling for us to come to him, to come to him. We have nothing to fear. The rock is our foundation. The rock is our source of strength. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And one thing I love about being on this rock is no matter what the storm looks like, no matter what the waves feel like, no matter how wild the winds are, I can lift my hands and say, it is well. It is well. It is well. When peace Christ hath 
but it can be well with your soul it may not be well with your body today but it can be well with your soul it might not be well with your marriage today but it can be well with your soul it might not be well on your job but it can be well with your soul in this I can rejoice that it is well with my soul come on give the Lord one more praise would you he's worthy he's worthy He's worthy. You know, as I stood there, I, I, I've made some decisions, folks. I made some decisions that I'm not leaving this building 
without being a sloppy, wet, sweaty mess because I gave God my all. I looked at the way I've lived my life. I've looked at the way that I've approached my job, my secular job. And man, I work, I'll sweat, I'll stay long hours, I'll, 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 you know, I'll put in the effort, I'll do all that stuff and wear myself out for temporary things. It's temporary. I don't know about you, but I have to go back to work next week because the check I got the week before is gone. That's what I found. And I just put in all this labor and all this effort and all this fortitude just to know that, just to know that what I'm working for is not going to last. But I made up my mind when I come to the house of God. I'm going to give God more than I gave him my week's worth of work. I'm going to give God my very best. And I, I leave here tired, wore out. Swear it doesn't matter because I'm not working for temple things when I come into the house of God. I'm working for eternal things and eternal reward that only God can give that doesn't wear out and it doesn't pass away. Thank God today it's well with my soul. It's well with my soul. It's well with my soul. Man, I am so full today. And man, I can't wait to empty myself. But I've got one more thing I want to share with you. That song... Uh, great are you, Lord. It's the second time I've heard it today. Second time I've heard it today. But I want to tell you, y'all jammed it out better than they did. And somebody could tell Todd Bryant that. I don't care. But, I, but as I was standing there, I began to have this thought. You know, there was a time in my home, I was the only one that worked. I was the only one bringing in a paycheck. And so coming around Christmas times, I was getting gifts that I know that had Tracy's name or Kelsey's name or Christian's name on it. But I, 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 I fought it and put the money up so that they, they could go do that. Okay? Now, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. But this is the joy of being a dad, being a husband, to, to a family that you support. You see, what I gave them, they took the thought, the forethought to take what I gave them to go not use it selfishly, but to take it and apply it back to the Father. The Bible said that God formed man and breathed in him the breath of God, and man became a living soul. You see, when they say that song, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, God, to you only, See, it's God that gave you that breath. And see, you can choose to use it selfishly to breathe out hatred or to breathe out judgment or to breathe out condemnation. Or you can say, God, you gave me this breath, so I'm going to give it back to you in a fashion of praise and prayer and adoration, and I'm going to magnify you, O oh God. You see, that's the joy of being a father is because my daughters could choose to go and buy a new dress or buy a new pair of shoes. And times they do that. And I, and I bless them to do that. But there's times they take what I have given unto them and says, Daddy, we want to do for you. And I could sit there and say, well, this is great and grand. I paid for it anyway. There's no real gift in this. But that's not what a real dad does. When I open up those gifts at Christmas time, I look at them and I say, oh, baby, thank you so much for picking this out for me. Thank you so much for giving this to me. Man, I so much appreciate it. In the back of my mind, I say, you know what? I, I blessed you to be a blessing, and you chose to bless the Father back. Listen, God has blessed you to be a blessing. You need to choose to bless the Father back. You need to choose that every breath of your body is going to bring out praise and glory and adoration to God. What a good God. Amen. Listen, I, I, we're going to get into the text. If you have your Bibles, grab Psalm 118, verse 22. And, uh, but, but as you're going there, let me just say, it feels good to be in surrender. I, I don't know about what God did in you over the last 21 days, but He's broken me. I've asked Him for selfish things. I've asked Him for things that, that I want. I've asked Him for things that I desire. I've asked Him to do stuff for me to make me feel better, to make me feel comfortable. And every time it seemed like I'd ask him and say, God, I, 
I want you to do this for me, God. I want you to show yourself. I want you to give me a dream. I want you to speak to me. It seemed like another lug rang off the wheel. It got to the point that God said, are you going to trust me? I don't have to show you anything. I just want you to trust me. Even though the dark, the night seems dark, and even though you seem compassed about with storms, and Sister Lisa talked about it a little bit, even though we see all that, the reality is that God is still there, and He's a rock that will not fall and will not falter. I have to share this with you, and then we're going to get to the Scripture. If you please, just bear with me just a moment. I know you've been standing a while, but i got to stand the rest of the service, so y'all just bear with me a moment. There was a time in my life that I was in a lot of turmoil. When I say a lot of turmoil, I, I was really fighting through some stuff. I had some personal issues. I had some financial issues, marital issues. We, we were dealing with a lot of stuff, and it was a tough, tough time. We got, a, we got a creek that runs in our front yard. And some of you have heard this story before, but we got a creek that runs in our front yard. And it used to be very wooded over next to us. They've cleared all that out now. And, and, uh, but I would go up in that wooded area, and I would sit at that creek bed. I had a little place, a little spot I picked out where I would go and just pray and talk to God. And, and everybody, all you got to be around me is five minutes, and you'll realize that I'm fidgety and I can't stay still. I got to be doing something all the time. But I had a stick, and I was breaking that stick off. I was throwing it in the water, and I'd watch the pieces float down. But as I was, I was talking to God, and I was breaking off the stick, and I threw out a piece of stick, and as I threw that piece of stick out, I just kind of watched it float down the creek. And the current of the creek is, is pretty swift when it's got water. It ain't got no water in it right now, but it was pretty swift. And all of a sudden, that stick that was a, a rotted, hollowed-out piece of stick stopped in the middle of the creek. And it caught my attention, and I sat there, and I looked at it, and I'm thinking, wow. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, son, go, go look at the stick. And I walked over down the bank of the creek, and I walked, and I looked at the stick, and I was looking over the top of it, and I was thinking, wow, how's, how's that stick doing that? And the Lord spoke to me and said, get down, son. you got to get on its level and look at where it's at. And I got down, and I looked at that stick, and that stick was sitting on the top of a rock. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, Son, no matter what rushes by on your left, no matter what rushes by on your right, it doesn't really matter if it goes over your head. If you'll stay on the rock, you'll find yourself safe and you'll find yourself secure. God has made me a promise. And David said this. He said, When I am overwhelmed, my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I and there I'll be safe. I want to minister this morning on a subject, and I know God gave me this, and I'm going to title it, The Significance of the Stone. The Significance of the Stone. Psalm 118.22 says this, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And I don't take time to flip there. Watch it on the screen. Let's go to Peter. In the book of Peter, he says in 1 Peter 2, beginning with verse 4, he says, Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect. He is so precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people or peculiar people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, final verse, who once were not a people but are now the people of God 
who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. At one time in this world, the only people, the only chosen people, the only recognized people were the people of Jewish descent. But now, you're a people. You didn't obtain mercy, but now you've obtained mercy. If I don't say another thing this morning, that's enough to go home shouting on right there. Your lively stones being built up into a spiritual house, but you've got to understand the significance of the stone, and it's that chief cornerstone. That's the stone that makes the difference. Father, help me today. I need you, Jesus. I need your presence. I need your power. I need your understanding. I need your wisdom. I need your anointing to deliver the word, God, that you have placed in my heart to do what you've called me to do today. And, Father, I surrender this time to you. I pray that you would help me to do expediently what needs to be done. And, Lord, if I get to a point that I just got to stop, I pray that you would direct me to stop where I need to stop. This is your service. This is your breath. This is your will, your perfect, perfect will, God, for today. You handpicked and, and, and designated for every person to come into this building at this moment to hear this word. Father, if they're watching online, you have purposed them for this moment to sit in front of their computer or their smart TV and watch this service online. Speak to them through this message, I pray, and let your will be accomplished, and we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. The significance of the stone. You know, as I go through Scripture, I find that there are a lot of places that God Use rocks and use stones. Oh, before I go too far, does anybody not have a rock in your hand? If you do not have a rock in your hand, would you raise your hand? I have a rock for you. You got some in the back. You got some here. Joel, uh, Joel can you go grab that other bucket and help them out? Because there's more here than I thought. Hey, hey, guys, if you're not figured it out, we start at 1030, okay? Uh, that's our new start time. So uh, if you've not got a rock, I want to make sure that everybody has a rock. We're going we're gonna to go right now. But, but as they're passing out these rocks, I just want to share. Just keep your hands up. Pretend like you're praising the Lord. If you see somebody walk by you with a bucket, make sure that they get your attention. I want everybody to have a rock because you're going to have to make a decision today based upon that rock. You have got to decide today about the rock. You can grab another bucket, Brother Tim. If you want to grab another bucket, there's two more buckets out there. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 33, I believe it is. I don't have this one up here, Trace. But in Exodus 33, Moses says to God, God, show me your glory. And the Bible said that God spoke to him and said, Moses, no one has ever looked at my face and lived. Anyone that looks at my face will die. Now, Brother Jim on Wednesday, Wednesday night, I believe it was, or last Sunday, I can't remember what service it was. It all kind of runs together after a while. But last, last week he talked about that what would happen if, if, if somebody come in today and shot the pastor, everybody would begin to hear about Daystar if I died. There's probably not anybody in this room that does not recognize the name Clementa Pinckney. He was the pastor of the church in Charleston that, that was tragically shot by Dylan Roof as he went in and bombarded that, 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 that sanctuary. So he talked about dying. Brother Jim said, but wouldn't it be even more powerful if the people of God would come before the face of God and die to God? and come alive to Jesus, that people would take notice of that and that people realize. And so Moses is saying, listen, God, I want you to show me your glory. And the Bible said that he took him, and the Bible said, you cannot see my face. If you see my face, you will not live. But this is what God said. God said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. And as my glory passes by, I'll let you see the backside of my glory. You see, that's the beauty of the relationship and the significance of the stone of what God has done for us is that now we are hid in the rock. And because of his glory and his power, the significance of what God has done for us as it, as it relates to the rock, the stone of, of Christ Jesus, of who he is and what he's done for us, there is significance in that rock. But that rock throughout Scripture represented many things. Number one, it represents a place where we can hide. 
Hit him in the cleft of the rock. David said, take me to the rock that's higher than I, and there I'll be safe. Let me hide in the rock. Let me hide behind the shadow of the rock. Let that rock be a protector. Let that rock be a foundation. Let that rock be a place of refuge. Let that rock be a place of provision. Let that rock be a place where I can find restoration. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, in Exodus 17, the Bible says that God said to Moses, said, go before the people and take with you some of the leaders of Israel and, and, and also take in your hand the rod which you struck the river and go. But this is what's going on. The Israelites are out in Egypt, or out of, out of Egypt. They're in the wilderness. There's no water for them. They begin to murmur. They begin, begin to complain. They realize, man, we're about to starve and we don't, are, are, are thirsty and we're going to perish out here. And so what are we going to do about water? And so God tells Moses, take the rod, take the elders, and I want you to go out behind the rock and whore. And I want you to strike the rock. And water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So what happened was God sustained them and provided for them through the rock. Now this rock here is a rock of representative of obedience. But Moses obeyed God. Moses did what God told him to do. But there was a point that God had to do it again. In the book of Numbers we see where God speaks to Moses. He said take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes and it will yield its water. Look, he says speak to the rock. So Moses goes out. He's frustrated. He's had been dealing with multi-millions of people. They're getting on his nerves. They're aggravating him, and it pushes him to the point that he did not obey God. Because the Bible said, he said, if you'll speak to the rock, then the rock will yield its water. But Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said, here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you from this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice. Out of disobedience, now, because of God's love for the people, he gave water from the rock. But because of the disobedience of Moses, he missed the promised land. You see, your rock today, the significance of the rock that you're holding in your hand is what do you choose to do with it? Do you choose to obey the Lord? Do you choose to make up your mind that you're going to serve God and hide in the cleft of that rock and allow that rock to sustain you? Are you going to go to that place and stand on that rock to know at that place in the rock that you're safe? You make that choice today. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke, that Jesus is on his way, and I'm skipping around a minute, Trace, that Jesus is on his way into the city. And as he's going into the city, the Bible says that they begin to praise him. They begin to worship him. They're throwing their coats down. They're throwing palm branches down. They're heralding him and, and declaring it to him. He, 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 is, he is the king. He's, he, he's the great I am. They're, they're just worshiping him. And as he's drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd and said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Tell them to quick what's going on. But see, they were obedient. They were doing what they were supposed to do. That rock was represented to them of obedience. But what they did not allow it to become was a rock of disobedience where they didn't do what God wanted, where they didn't do what God had told them to do. They did exactly what God told them. Jesus said, I tell you that if these hold their peace, if they keep silent, the stones will immediately cry out. Well, I don't want to throw me a rock, Brother Chad. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you right now, there ain't no rock that can shout amazing grace. There ain't no rock that can shout in my place and I'm not letting a rock cry out for me. That rock don't know what Jesus did for me. That rock don't know where God brought me from. That rock don't know how God delivered me. So I'm not going to let a rock shout in my place. I want you to be reminded every day that this rock is a rock that can be obedience. That rock can be everything God wanted you to be. Or you can let that rock do the praising for you. See they determined. They made up their mind. We're going to worship him. But see this is the thing. They were worshiping him for things that they had seen. Jesus told Thomas, he said, Thomas, you, you serve me, you worship me, you, you do this because you've seen. But blessed are those who have not seen, but yet still serve me. You see, there's things I still have not seen, but I praise him because I know he's still able. 
There's still things I know that are yet to come. There are still things I know that God's about to do. There's still things I know that are on the horizon. There's still things I know that God's about to meet the need. There's things I know that God's working out. I know there's some things that are, seem bad to me, but and people might have meant it for evil, but God's about to turn around for my good. But I know this. I am sure on the rock, and I've got my mind made up that God's going to see me through. And so I'm praising him for what I've not yet seen because I know that God's going to work it for me. See, that's, that's the level of faith that God wants us to understand, that there's the significance of the stone, that, that God is calling us to this level that we can stand on the rock and no matter what the storms look like, no matter what the sounds are, no matter what's going on in our life, we got to know that God is working it for our good. It's the significance of the stone. It's the significance of what God's doing in our life. And so here he is. Moses is there. And, and, he's, and we see this stone of disobedience. Look what he said. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He said, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock, capital R, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Verse 5, but with most of them God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Why? Because they murmured, they complained, they backbited, they talked about one another. Can I tell you we got to go ahead and make up our mind moving forward that we need to quit tearing one another up and start loving on one another. We need to go ahead and determine in our mind that God has given me this breath to utter praise to him to magnify him, to glorify him, to bless the name of the Lord with all that's within me I'll bless his holy name. See they, they, they had to make that determination. So, so what, what, what was all this about? That this disobedience, this, this stone that you hold in your hand can be a symbol to you of, of a decision, a choice to say, God, I choose to worship you so that this stone doesn't have to. God, I choose to obey your word. And if you tell me to speak to this rock, if you tell me to speak to this problem, God, then I'm going to speak to this problem. But God, if you tell me to strike the problem, then I'm going to strike the problem. Whatever you, and I know that if I obey your word and I'll do what you told me to do, I know, God, that your will is going to come out of it. It might not be exactly what I think I should have. It might not come the way I think I want. Listen, I don't know about you, but, but I wasn't necessarily looking for water from a rock. So I like water in a bottle. I like water with ice in it. I like my water tainted with tea. Sweet, preferably. I have missed it over the last 21 days. I, I, I Listen, last night I told my wife, I said, man, I am so tired of drinking water. You ever just drink so much water? And my wife, she's like, oh, this is so good. I just love, and I'm over there going, God, I can't wait for this to be over. Who called this thing anyway? She asked me last night. She was making tea for the thing tonight. She said, do I have to make you some? I said, I surely appreciate it. They drank the same spiritual drink. They ate of the same spiritual food. But yet God was not pleased with them. Listen, you can come and sit in church service, and you can worship to the same songs. You can say, amen, brother. Preach it, pastor. You can do all the same stuff that everybody else does. And I want to tell you, God could still not be pleased with you. And you'll die in the wilderness. You see, there is a significance of the stone. It is a place where we find foundation. It is a place. The Bible said, Jesus told the parable of a man that dug down. And the Bible said, and one man built his house upon sand. And when the storms came, great was the destruction of it. And, 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 we, saw, and we saw that. But then Jesus said, but then there was a man that was a wise builder. He dug down until he got to rock. And when he got to rock, he said, now I can begin to build. Sometimes you got to dig down to get down to where you need to be. What I mean, i got to humble myself. i got to get myself down so that I can find some sure footing. To know that I'm standing on something that's solid so that when storms come and winds blow and waves clap that I know that I'll still be sustained. I don't have to go and just build it on my own effort or build it on my own prestige. But let me build on the rock Christ Jesus. Let me find a sure foundation. Let me find that place that I know that no matter what comes my way, I can still stand in the midst of it all. I'm telling you, that's the kind of people we need to be. I listened to Pastor Mike this morning. He was talking about a beach scene that the Lord gave him a vision of, and he said, you know, and he talked about several different things, but it was something that struck me. 
He said, you know, there are a lot of people in the Christian walk that are just like those people on the beach that like to build sandcastles. Sandcastles are pretty for a while. But the tide's coming in. And everything that you put your effort to do is going to be washed away. Now, now I come to tell you this morning, you got to go ahead and decide what you're about building. You know, I, I, I have been distressed over the last week about trying to get leaks fixed and all this stuff. But I've decided that I don't need to build this building. And if you get aggravated because there's a bucket in the hallway, then just go on and get aggravated. But, but, but I've decided I don't need to build this building. God didn't call me to build a building. God called me to build the kingdom. And if I can just build the kingdom and do what the kingdom and what the king of the kingdom has called me to do, then God will take care of everything else. That's what Matthew said. Matthew said, if I seek God and his righteousness first, then all these other things shall be added unto me. So I'll build the kingdom. I'll get my mind on the king of the kingdom. And if I'm seeking after him, God will take care of what needs to be taken care of. Lord, see, see, i got to make a decision with my rock today. I've got to make a decision. A- am I going to obey? Am I going to worship? Am I going to praise Him? Am I going to build the things of God? Am I going to stand on the things of God? Am I going to be everything God's calling me to be? Or am I going to be like those that drank from the water from the rock, ate the spiritual food, and died because they didn't obey? See, God's called us to build the place. Genesis chapter 28. In Genesis chapter 28, we find Jacob. He's been sleeping on a rock. Matter of fact, the rock was his pillow. And as he lay there, he's dreaming of this ladder that's ascending. And the angels are ascending up into heaven. And angels are ascending and descending up and down on the, the ladder. And, and, and Jacob is laying there. But when Jacob wakes from his dream, all of a sudden he realizes, man, I've been in the presence of God. And the Bible said that he took the stone that he had put at his head, he set it up as a pillar, he poured oil on the top of it, and he called the name of the place Bethel. Bethel means house of God. Listen, he's out in the middle on the side of a cliff somewhere. But, but Jacob said, this is your house, God. See, it don't matter where you're at, this is your house, God. Doesn't matter where you're at, it's, it's your house, God. Doesn't matter if you're working at Duke Powell, it's your house, God. Doesn't matter if you're working at the food line, it's your house, God. Doesn't matter if you're sitting at your house, it's your house, God. Don't matter if you're just standing on a field all by yourself, it's still his house. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, where God has called you to keep it clean. Listen, you are the habitation of the presence of God. Something struck me this morning as I was praying. You know, I, I don't know about you, but let me, let me go over and talk to somebody. I don't know about you, but we've been asking for a visitation of the glory of God. Am I right? But, but something struck me this morning. I, I, I think we need to stop asking for a visitation and start asking for a habitation. Are you with me? I, listen, I, I, I think we need to stop asking God to come and visit us and just go ahead and make up our mind that we want him to stay with us. I, I don't want him just to come by on, on the spur of a moment, but now I want him to come and abide with me. And if I can abide with me and he can abide with me, I'm telling you, my life will forever be changed. I don't want just a visit. I want him to come and live with me and move with me and him and breathe and have my being in him. That's what I want from the Lord. So, so, so he called the name of that place Bethel. And, and, and the name of that city had been Luz previously. He just changed that. Listen, when God comes into a place, he just changes the whole scenario. I, I know you were known as Luz, but now you're going to be known as Bethel. See, see when, when Jacob had that encounter, he said, you're not going to be Jacob anymore. You're not going to be that stingy supplanter, that person that just, te- that, that, you're that devious one. Now I'm going to call you Israel. You're, you're not going to be Jacob anymore. You're, listen, when God gets involved in something, he just changes the whole scenario of it. He just changes the very fabric of it. He just moves it around like he wants to. And we just got to fall in obedience to it. Let me tell you, day star, we better go ahead and make up our mind that we're going to serve the Lord no matter what it looks like, smells like, tastes like. We just got to say, God, you go ahead and do what you got to do. And I'm just going to get in line. It's like I told you the other night. you gotta, you got you to gotta just go ahead and determine in your mind that the answer to the question is going to be yes. Pastor, I don't know what the question is. Does it matter? I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going to live for the Lord. The answer is yes. God, whatever you ask, whatever you ask of me, can God, the answer is yes. I'm going to serve you, God. I'm going to live for you. God, this is the place I want you to come where you change my life. Change my life. Jacob made a vow and he said, God, if you'll be with me and keep me in the way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. Hold your stone. Hold your stone. You see, that stone 
Jacob said, this stone, now, I, I, you know, I'm, I didn't bring you boulders because I want you to be able to take them home with you, okay? But, but that stone, they, Jacob is saying, listen, this stone is, is going to be represented to you, to me, that this is your house. Think about this. When, 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 Joshua, when Joshua crossed the Jordan River, and all of a sudden, the, as the river parted, and they, and they all walked across, and the priest stood in the midst of, of the river as the people of God crossed, all of a sudden, God spoke and said, I want you to get me 12 stones, and I want you to set up a monument so that people will know that this is the place that God brought delivered, that this is the place that God parted the Jordan. Listen, folks, you got to have those monuments in your life. you got to have those places that you look back to and say, God was with me in that situation. God was in me in that crisis. The waters were overrunning their banks. It seemed like I was going down. It seemed like, man, my life was a mess, but God was with me. You got to set up those monuments in your life so that you got a point of reference that you can go back to and hold to that stone and say, God, you were with me then. You can get me through now. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, somebody in the house needs to remind yourself that in the past, God's been good to you. God saw you through, and God's going to do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Just trust him to know that God's going to be with you through every storm, every trial, every circumstance, every situation. God's going to see you through. God's going to see you through. God's going to see you through. They established their stones. They set them up and said, listen, I met with God here. Every person in here, there is a place of significance in your life that you can look to and you can say, God, at that point, you made the difference in my life. It would do us well sometimes to go back and I know no man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I know the word of God. You ain't got to become theologians on me all of a sudden. But sometimes it would do us well to go back and say, God, I remember. You see, every one of us get moments where we just seem overwhelmed, where we seem like our life is out of a spiral and everything seems to be going crazy. David got in those places. But this is what the Bible said David did. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He, he reminded himself, I, I, I could see David now. I don't, now. Let me be David for just a minute, okay? And, and let me be the David the way that I think David will be because I, I can only know me, okay? I, I could see David on the field by himself over there, pitiful, throwing himself a pity party, and all of a sudden shaking himself, wait a minute. Self, listen, listen to what God did for you. Now, I don't know about you, but I talk to myself this way. Listen, I've laid hands on myself. Get the devil. I, 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 I've done it. I've been going down the road, pow, you better get out of you. People riding up inside me going. Sometimes you got to rebuke yourself. And sometimes you got to encourage yourself. David encouraged himself. He probably said, self, these people that are threatening you, these people that are trying to mess with you, don't you remember when you were out there and nobody cared about you and nobody was concerned, your daddy didn't even want to bring you before the prophet, but yet you sat out there in that sheep field stinking with sheep poop all over you and all over your feet and you're out there messing with stinky, rotten people and a bear came and all of a sudden the Spirit of God moved on you and you grabbed the bear and tore him in pieces. Don't you remember when the lion came and tried to take one of your babies and God rose up and you caught the lion by the mane? Don't you remember when that Goliath stood before you and hurled out accusations but the spirit of God came on you when everybody tried to get you to operate in somebody else's power but the anointing of my God the anointing of God came on you and God moved on you and the stone left the sling and buried in the head of Goliath don't you remember he encouraged himself in the Lord listen if you're broke today you've been broke before can I get a witness didn't God bring you through? Come on now. If you were in the valley of decision today, haven't you been in the valley of decision before and God brought you through? Let God do it. But encourage yourself in the Lord and say, God, you are my God and there is no other. I will not bow at the foot of a report of a man. I will not bow at a bank statement. I will not bow at the feet of a boss man on a job. But God, I bow my knee to one and one alone. They can threaten me with the furnace. They can threaten me with fire. Me. They can threaten me with my bodily harm. But God, I'm going to fear the one that's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And I'm going to bow only to you. These problems won't be always. This problem, this sickness won't be always. But God, you are forevermore. To you or you alone I bow.
my knee. So the Bible said that Moses set up this pillar. And he spoke. And he said, this is the house of God. In Matthew 16, we find that Jesus and Peter and some of the others are having a conversation. And the Bible said that it came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. Now, you're gonna, you need to understand something about Caesarea Philippi. It was one of the most adulterous, wicked, idol-worshiping regions in all of that kingdom there. But Jesus comes into this region. And with all this demonic working that is going on in Caesarea Philippi, I don't believe he went over the corner and said, hey, hey boys, who do y'all think I am? I think he backed up to hell and looked at his disciples with all that demonic activity behind him and said, men, who do people say that I am? Woo! All of a sudden, men began to rise up. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're one of the prophets. Men, but who do you say? Sometimes you got to back up to hell. And don't look at hell. Look at Jesus. Don't look at the problem. Look at Jesus. Don't look at how bad things are around you. Don't look at what everybody says. But declare, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm telling you, God can give you a revelation even in the midst of demonic activity. God can give you a power and a strength. Oh, I'm telling you, God can do it. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter answered him and said this. Verse 17, Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say unto you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church in the gates of Hades. Hades, Doris, Hades. There's Hades on the board. Hades shall not prevail against it. Doris won't say hell, so I taught her the Greek for hell, which is Hades. And so now when she says Hades, she'll say, What did I say? I said, Hell. Oh, I can't say that. Hades? I said, Yes, yeah, say Hades. Oh, okay. She's still saying hell. She just don't realize it. Ain't the right, Doris? Amen, that's right. All right, I got to keep on moving. Back up one verse for me, Trace, please. Jesus is standing before Peter, and he says to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. There are so many Christian people, especially in Catholicism, that have taken this verse, and they've looked at Peter as something special, as he was a man that Jesus made this promise over, that God was going to use him to build the church and he would be the foundation of what the church would be built on. There are people that have made that assumption. But it was not Peter. It was the declaration that Peter made that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was that truth that he would build his church on. Can I tell you there is no other truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the rock Christ Jesus. And on him you can stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You can stand on the truth. That truth will be established. If this church is going to be what it's supposed to be, if this ministry is going to be what it's supposed to be, it better be built on one singular truth, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. It better not be on emotion. It better not be on hype. It better not be on a preacher or a denominational name. It better be on one thing and one thing alone and that's Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and I'll stand and I'll declare it that it is what everything needs to be that every foundation must be Jesus Christ the son of the living God and when it's that he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whew. See the problem was, and this is what lets me know that this wasn't really about Peter. Because just as quick as Peter got it right, Peter got it wrong. Just as quick as Peter got it right, Peter got it wrong. Jesus is thinking, okay, we're getting somewhere now. These boys are finally getting it. So now I can let them in a little bit further. I can let them in a little bit deeper, and I can begin to tell what's going on. So let's keep going. Verse 19, he said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. What if you bind on earth, be bound in heaven? What if you loose on earth, be loosed in heaven? Man, that's, that's, that's authority. I got keys. And those keys give me the authority to go in the door that I want to enter into. He says, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. I'm giving you the authority to go into the kingdom and bind what needs to be bound and loose what needs to be loosed. He commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was, he was the Christ. So from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Stop a minute. 
He began to show him, okay, I'm going I'm to bring you a little bit further. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer. You're, you're getting revelation. And as I'm giving you revelation, I'm going to bring you a little bit closer. I'm going to tell you some things that's going on. He began to tell him, listen, i got to go suffer. You see, church people are okay until we have to talk about suffering. Church people are okay until we have to talk about, well, this is going to hurt. You know, church people are okay until you say, well, you know, it's not going to be comfortable for you. Let me tell you what I'm asking God to help me do. I'm asking God to help me push you out of your comfort zone. I'm asking God to help me push you. And listen, I'm going to lead by example. There are people that will say, well, preacher, you just made a show of yourself. No, I'm making much about Jesus. I ain't making much about joy because joy ain't done a thing for me, but Jesus done everything for me. And if I make much about him, then that's what it's going to be about. It's all about him because he is the Christ, the son of the living God. You might say, well, I'm not going to act that way. You can choose to act that way or not act that way. That's your business. But I'm choosing to make my mind up that I'm going to serve the Lord with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my body. That's what it said. Anyway, let me go on. Y'all getting nervous on me already. Oh, my Lord, he's going to call us up. We're going to shout and dance. Oh, Lord, heaven forbid if we shout and dance. Anyway, Jesus began to show him. said, this is what I'm going to suffer. I'm going to be killed. And listen, they missed the last part. I'm going to be raised the third day. Peter missed that part. All he heard was, we're going to suffer. He's going to die. Peter stands up. Let's keep going. He took him aside and he rebuked him. Boy. Peter thought, man, I got it right, boy. I got a leg to stand on now, you know. I, he, he has declared over me, I'm, I'm a rock. He's declared. Jesus put him in his place real quick. He thought he could rebuke the master. He said, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. What are you, what are you saying? But Jesus turned and he said, get behind me, Satan. I mean, one moment people think he's being called a rock, and the next minute he's being called Satan. I mean, you're like, Jesus, come on, make your mind up. No, Jesus had his mind made up. It's Peter needs to make his mind up who Jesus really is. If Jesus is declared as the Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, then ain't he the one that's able to go and suffer and die but also be raised on the third day just like he said he would? Listen, he said, get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me for you are not mindful of the things of God but the things of men. Listen, this is, again, this is not about Peter. This is still not about Peter. Peter went from revelation to devastation. That's tweetable. Somebody needs to tweet that. Peter went from revelation to devastation. He, he lost it. He absolutely lost it. He went from Christ the Son of the living God to rebuking the Master, and now Satan is working through him. And Jesus doesn't, listen, Jesus loves Peter, but he recognizes the source of the language that's coming from his mouth, and he puts that in place. You see, that's the problem in the body of Christ. We attack one another rather than attacking the source of the conflict. We're ready to destroy one another when we really need to band together and destroy the source of the conflict and recognize that greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. He said, you're not mindful of the things of God but the things of men. Listen, this is what God's trying to get him to understand. This is what I'm doing for you. I'm the stone. I'm the rock. The truth is, I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. Look what he says in Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 22. The Bible says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Listen, I, I, I got to get with some people because, you know, we, we, we represent ourselves as we're Daystar Church. But, but I want us to come to the understanding. I, 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 I got to get with somebody because I'm going to develop a T-shirt that just says simply, I am the church. I am the church. I am being built up on the foundation of Jesus Christ. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is not good. The Bible, the Bible teaches it. God does not dwell in buildings built with stone and by the men, men's hands. But he dwells in people. This is where he dwells. I am the church. You see, this building is not the church. We say we're going to church. Well, I'm already at church before I get to church because I'm with him. He is. Jacob said, this is the place. This is the house of God. I've been here. I've met with God. This is the house of God. Now in the New Testament because of what Christ did, now we are the house of God. Now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're being built up 
to be the dwelling place of God in the spirit. God wants to dwell with you. But see, you have to make your mind up. Lord, are you welcome in this place? Are you welcome in me? Listen, this is what God's looking for. So, everybody get your stone. Come here, Anna. Come here, baby. You want to help me with this, so come on. I'm going to give you the chance while we got it. Come on up here. Come on up here. Now, i got to play a couple different roles, but I want you to hang with me, okay? All right. So, in John chapter 8, we find that Jesus is at the temple, and he's been teaching and things are happening. But the Bible says that the, the scribes brought to him a woman caught. And listen, I, I'm sure they treat her like a piece of dirt, so I need you to let me do that, okay? I, I know you're the little actress. We're going to take you from the broad way to the narrow way, but we're going to get you there, okay? Glory, glory to God, I love you so much. But they caught her and they threw her. I love the way she does that. I could just get the rest of y'all to work with me like this. And they're standing there, every one of them armed with stones. You see, what they understood about stones is far different than what God intended for stones. Now, I know that God was the one that put judgment in place, and judgment comes by stones. But there was a new stone in the midst. There was a different stone in the midst. And these guys brought Jesus, this woman to Jesus and said, Lord, we've caught this woman in the very act. They should have turned the stone one another for being perverts looking at a window. Anybody all right with me this morning? Should have stoned themselves. Should have just thrown them in there and hit themselves in the head. But Lord, the scripture, Moses commanded that this woman should be stoned. But what do you say? He didn't say a thing. Just got near and near. The real stone just began to draw in the dirt. Just began to draw in the dirt. And as he stooped down and he wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not even hear him because he recognizes this ain't about you and your religiosity. This ain't about you and your religious principles. This is about an opportunity. I'm about to take this young lady and transform her life. So they kept on asking him. He kept on writing. And when he got tired of them asking, he raised up and said to them, Hey, you guys, if you don't have any sin, you cast the first stone. You cast the first stone. And all of a sudden, one by one, they began to drop that stone and begin to walk away sorrowful. What they should have done is drop that stone and grab the other stone. But they couldn't do that. And so Jesus stayed near the woman. And all of a sudden, she lifted up her head and looked around, and it was just her and Jesus. Woman, where are your accusers? There are none. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin. No more. You see, the, the, the problem is, I'll give you this back. The problem is, too many in the church want to pick up their stones because they've forgotten what the real stone has done for them. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. Brother Chan, in my reading of Scripture, and I've read it through several times, but in my reading of Scripture, I find that there are rebukes for sinful ways. But I find that there is more expressed in Scripture to make more about a Savior than there is the sinner. There is more made about the Savior than there is the sinner. You read the Pauline epistles and you'll find that he does talk about sin. He does talk about wrongdoing. He does talk about failures in the church. But he always comes back and says, let's make much of Jesus. Those things that are behind me, I count them as done. I count them as lost. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. One by one, those men made the decision, I don't have a right to throw a stone at this girl. They messed up and they decided, I'm not going to turn to the stone that's before me. I'm just going to let go of this one and I'm going to go back to my religious ways. You got a decision today. You got to decide today, do I let go of my stone of adversity? 
Do I let go of my stone of anguish? Do I let go of my stone of jealousy? Do I let go of my stone of rebuke? Do I let go of my stone of judgment, my stone of hypocrisy? Do I let go of this stone and I cling to the stone, which is the rock Christ Jesus? One last verse of Scripture, so let's, let's, if you can play me something. Matthew chapter 24, or 21 rather, verse 42. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the Scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. He's speaking to the Jews now. But look what he says here in this last verse. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind into powder. You'll be crushed. You see, give it back to me. Thank you, baby. You see, you can cling to your stone. Or you can fall on the stone, the rock Christ Jesus, and be broken. Preacher, that'll hurt, but he's the healer. Preacher, I, I, I might have things knocked off of me. He's the supplier of your need. Friends might leave me. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. You got a stone in your hand. Every person in this building should have a stone in your hand. And you need to make the decision today. Do I let this thing become my driving force? Or do I let this thing go and fall on him and be broken so that God can be everything in my life? Remember, the Lord is near those that are of a contrite spirit. And he blesses those that are of a broken heart. If you're broken today, he'll be near you. He'll be near you. He'll be near you. Now, you might say, well, preacher, you know, you talk to a bunch of church people today. I want to tell you something. Today is a new day. Today is a new beginning. And there's some of you, you've held on to stones. and You've held on to things. And you're still holding on to things. You went through this 21 days of prayer and fasting, and you were obstinate. And you were hard-headed. And you clung to stuff, and you said, there ain't no way that preacher's going to tell me what to do. Ain't no way that I'm going to let go of what I'm letting go of. Ain't no way I'm turning off this. Ain't no way I'm going to quit listening to that. Ain't no way I'm going to quit doing this. Ain't no way I'm, I'm not giving up my food. I'm not giving up my sweet tea. You can come in here with the obstinance all you want, and you're going to make a decision when you leave this building today. Every person in this building is going to make a decision. But the significance of the stone is that last verse. Either you fall on it by choice, and be broken, or he'll fall on you in judgment, and you'll be crushed. The question is, it's about your decision. I can't name your stone. If I went around this room, and for every person in this building, there's something that you won't let go of. There's something that you're clinging to, and your stone could be revealed as many things. But you can, in one fell swoop, fall on him, He'll break whatever needs to be broken. And when he does it, when you come out on the other end, you'll be the best for it. You see, I knew that was going to happen. Not because of you, because I threw it wrong. Over the last couple of days, there's been a lot of storms that have blown through. My wife and Lisa came to pray one, sun, uh, one day during the week. Last week, I believe it was, and Tracy shared with me. See, my wife and Lisa, man, they've been getting some, they've been having some moves of God in here. Some other ladies, Tabitha, went home with bruised knees and falling out in the spirit. Nobody even touched her. I mean, God's, God has been moving through these prayer times. But one day my wife got here before anybody else, and it had been storming. And, and, and Brother Mike and his nephew had just cleaned the parking lot, Brother Mike. Y'all done a phenomenal job cleaning the parking lot. And come back like the next day or the day after, and there were sticks and limbs everywhere. And I'm thinking, man, you know, all that effort to clean up the, and me and some of the men were on the roof. We looked over at this tree over here. And, and about three limbs had broken out of that tree. But one, the major, just the top. It wasn't even the limb. It was just the top of the tree that was just laying over. And I thought, Lord, we got to do something about that. So I went to my local horticulturalist, Brother Jim, over there. I said, Brother Jim, what do you think about this tree? And, 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 and as I began to cut it, the carpenter ants had ate it all up. So it, it, was, it was just eat up. So I had to make the decision to cut the wood down. We're going to use it for something good. You know, I let Brother Jerry here get the wood and take care of his house and heat his house in the wintertime. I said, you know, it, it'll come to some use, so we had to cut it down. But that storm came through, and Tracy was here, and nobody else was here yet. All these limbs were out there in the yard and in the parking lot, and one of them, I think she told me, got hung up under the Jeep. 
she got out there and she was trying to get everything picked up. She was trying to get everything, you know, taken care of. And she might have shared this with you. But, but she was trying to get everything picked up before Lisa and anybody else got there to make sure they didn't run over them because she was in her Jeep and they were in little smaller cars. And she didn't want them to, you know, run over anything. You know, a Jeep, you run over it and destroys it. A car, you know, it destroys the car anyway. Uh, that was a plug for Jeeps, but <laughs> y'all didn't get that. She's out there and all of a sudden God speaks to her. She said, you know, she's, she's questioning why these limbs are falling, all this other stuff. And God speaks to her and says, storms have to come so that it can blow the dead things away. She said, but I looked at some of them and there was green leaves on them. She said, but Lord, these still have life in them. And and, and, was asked, and, and I'm paraphrasing, okay? But and if you want the, the whole thing, the way it's supposed to be said, you can ask her. But the Lord spoke to her and said, but even some of these things are necessary that I can get them out of the way so that growth can come. You know, and that's not to speak against anybody. That's not to speak down to anybody. That's not, I'm just telling you what the Lord spoke to my wife. And there are times that we go through those storms, like Sister Lisa was talking about, and we say, God, why this storm now? You know, I'm asking God, why cancer for my wife? Why cancer for Brother Jim? Why is Brother Jerry having to go through what he's going through? You know, why, why is this going on right now, Lord? Why is it that the men, we go on the roof and we do all this work, and, 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 and several rainstorms come and nothing happens? We get one rainstorm yesterday and it starts leaking right here. And it had leaked in the past three rainstorms. And all of a sudden it leaks. And I'm thinking, God, why? Why is this stuff happening? Tracy and I came in yesterday and there was leaks where it had leaked before. And I'm thinking, God, why is this happening? What's going on? Why are you letting these things happen? And there's probably some of you, you got stuff going on in your life and you're saying to God, why? Why am I having to deal with this? See, this is the beauty of it. You don't have to deal with it. You could cast your cares on him, the stone. You could fall on him and be broken and allow God to do in your life what needs to be done. Or you can still hang on to what you're hanging on to. And I promise you, he will fall on you one day. And when he falls, he's coming with a force and it's going to grind you. It's going to crush you. But if you'll make the choice to let go of whatever you're hanging on to and say, God, I'm not letting this stone cry in my place. I'm not letting this stone leave me. I'm not letting this stone be the detriment of me. I'm not letting this stone be my disobedience. God, I'm going to obey and I'm going to speak to this stone. I'm going to do what I should do to this stone. And I'm going to put this stone in its proper place. And God, I'm going to declare you as the Christ, the Son of the living God over my life. And on that truth, that rock, God, I want you to build your kingdom. I want you to build your church in me so that I can be the dwelling place you called me to be. Hold your rock up. Hold your rock up. I want us to pray as you're holding that rock up. I want us to pray. And I want you to ask God, first of all, God, show me if there's a representation of my stone. Show me if I've got something I need to let go of, God. Show me. Listen, there's a reason some of you are snipping at people and fighting at people and arguing with people and carrying on with people because you got something you're holding on to. It ain't even about the person. You're wondering what it is and why you're acting the way you're acting. You need to let that thing go. Listen, I've had to deal with some stuff. There's some stuff I've had to let go. I want us to take a moment before we move any further. And I want every one of you to personally ask God, Lord, what's my stone representing my life? What do I need to let go of, God? What do I need to take and fall on you with, Lord? What do I need to lay at your feet, God, that you can be everything to me? Make your decision today. Whichever decision you make, it's going to be totally up to you. But you've got to make up your mind. Either you're going to let it go or you're going to carry this thing with you in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are things that I have got to let go. There are things that I am clinging to that are not going to bring me hope. They're not going to bring me restoration. They're not going to bring me peace. They have done nothing but drug me down and inhibited me and stopped me from being everything you call me to be. And God, I am making a decision, a choice today to let go of my hurt, my anger, my unforgiveness, my instability my slowfulness, my slackness. God, my life changes as a result of these last 21 days and what you have done in me. God, I am making the decision that my life is going to be different. I'll never be the same. As they sang about in that first song, God, oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. And God, I make my choice today. And I'm asking the people that are here today to make their choice to make their choice, either to decide to hold on to what they're holding on to or walk out of here today 
with that rock of significance that's in their life. They can either walk out of here today with the fullness of who you are, or they can cling to the thing that they're clinging to and allow it to bring death and judgment in their life. Okay, Daystar, have you made your choice? Bring that rock to this altar. Don't leave it at this altar. I want you to take it as a reminder, as a memorial. But I want you to bring that rock to this altar, and I want you to lay it before the feet of Jesus, and I want you to pray over that thing. Not that rock, what you got going on. I want you to give it to him. He is the rock that should be the significant one in your life. He is the one that should be significant in your life. He is the one that should be significant in your life. He is the rock. On him you must stand. Give that thing to him today. Give that thing to him today. Lay it before him. Yield it to him today. Father, we take this rocks and we lay them before you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank Just you, Lord. let go and reach for me. You will find that I am all you'll ever need. Take my hand. Carry you. Trust in me, I'm making all things new. Mm -hmm. Just let go. Just let go. Just let go and reach for me. You will find that I am all you'll ever need. Take my hand, let me carry you. Father, I surrender to being Just broken. Trust in me. I don't want to be crushed. I surrender to being broken, God. Help me, God. Help me, Jesus. Just let go. Come on, let it go. Let it go. He'll grab it if you'll give it to him. Reach for me. Maybe you've been fighting peer pressure. Young people, give it to Jesus. Maybe your marriage is a wreck. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Maybe you got some, some unsettled business in your life. Give it to God. Maybe you got some addictions. Maybe you got some habits. Let it go. Maybe you're clinging to people when you need to cling to Jesus. Let it go. Reach for him. Bless your name, Jesus. I want to make much of you, Jesus. God, I let this stone go. Lord, I don't do like those decide, those Pharisees did. I'm not walking away from you. I am coming after you, Jesus. I am coming after you, Jesus. I'm coming after you, Jesus. I give it to you. I give it to you, Jesus. If you've dealt with a judgmental spirit, give it to him. If you've dealt with a, a hypocrisy, if the best you are for Jesus is on Sunday, you need to talk to him. Let that thing go. Make much of Jesus on Monday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Tuesday and Saturday. Then you can come in and really make much of Him on Sunday. Give it all to Him. Help us, Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, for being at our best on a Sunday when we should be at our best every day of the week for you, God. I surrender all that I am, Jesus. I surrender all that I am, God. Come on, give it to Him. This is a significant moment in somebody's life. God's going to mark you. God's going to make the difference in your life today. If you'll let this thing go. Let this thing go. Let this thing go.
that stone with you now and that's going to be a reminder of what you've let go you're not clinging to it in the sense that you're taking it home with it you're clinging to it it's just to remind you it's just to remind you I had to let it go 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I let it go. Lord, I let it go. Come on. God's doing a work in your life. Let him do it. Let him do it. Thank you, Lord. Let him do it. Thank you, Jesus. Broken and poured out, oh God. I yield myself to you, Jesus. I yield myself to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I fall on the cross. I fall on that rock. I fall on that rock. Break me, God. Break me, Jesus. Break my will. Break my agenda. Break my desire. Break me, oh God. I let it go. I let it go. I let it go. I let it go. I let it go, go, Jesus. I let it go, Jesus. And I wanna sit at your feet. Thank you, Lord. Drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and just breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. I'm going to sit here at your feet and drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat for me. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. Lord, I melt in your peace. in your peace. As he's a prayer, can we pray about a couple things together? Um, yesterday in uh, Bethlehem, North Carolina, which is just outside of Hickory, the Bethlehem Baptist Church was struck by lightning and burned to the ground. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ. They said that uh, blocks down the road There were people grabbing pages of the hymnal that the wind and the embers were floating as people were just trying to grasp a hold of something. I want to lift them up and ask God to touch them and strengthen them as they're having to figure out what they're going to do. Um, So I'm just believing that God's going to touch them and minister to them. And also, uh, Rusty, my big brother in the Lord, just sent me a text. And as both of you know, he's had a couple of strokes and He's unable to move like he needs to move. And uh, he's, he's had to operate, get around on a scooter. 
And uh, he was on a hill the other day, and the scooter, the brakes locked up, and it flipped. And the scooter hit him in the shoulder and then landed on his legs. And he's, you remember the few times he's been here, he doesn't have much mobility in his legs anyway. But I want to lift him up in prayer today. Pray for God to touch him and minister to him. Um, he's like a big brother to me. I love him and um, wouldn't want to see him hurt for nothing in the world. And uh, I want us to, one more time, pray for these that have surgery this week. For Brother Jerry and for Tracy, that God would touch them and minister to them. Uh, that God would just go ahead and go ahead and do it. Listen, the Bible said where two or three agree is touching any one thing. Whatever we ask, it shall be done. And listen, I, I stand on that scripture more now than I've ever stood on it in my life, I believe. To know that I need the body of Christ to stand with me. Brother Roger, you know, you've been in those doctor's office and they stand there and they give you those reports. You, you feel helpless. You feel like, man, there's nothing I can do. I, I, I can't fix this, you know. You know, I, I, can't, I can pray for her, but I can't fix her. And I've always been the one to fix things. You know, something break around the house, I fix it. You know, if she's got a problem, she calls me, I fix it. But, you know, when you stand there and you're looking at something, you feel so helpless because there's nothing you can do. You realize, man, more than ever, I need the body of Christ. And I got, we got people all over the country that are praying for my wife. I mean, all over the country, literally all over the country that are praying for my wife, that God touch her and minister her. But, Jerry, I got people praying for you, brother. I, I love you, man. I, I appreciate you. You've been so kind to me. And I, I believe God's going to give you favor with that. He's already shown you through your heart test. He can turn situations around. You know, I, I know God can finish. The Bible said he, that, that He is able to complete that which He has begun in you until the coming of Jesus Christ. He, he can do that for you. I believe that. But I believe that there's a power in a binding together with the body of Christ when we bind together. And listen, there's going to be more of this accountability. There's going to be more of this pulling together and being the body of Christ. And I'm going to talk to you about that some more. I shared a little bit Wednesday night. But there's some things we're going to do, and we're going to strengthen this body. There are some, I'm just going to be honest, the pastor, I'll be the first to tell you, there are flaws in this body. There are, there are weak links that have to be strengthened, that we can pull this thing together and be strong for the kingdom of God. And, and we're going to have to do that together and ask God to help us. And so we're praying for that, praying about that, believing for God to do that. But as these are continuing to pray, I want them to continue to pray. Would you stand and find about two, three people that you can join with? And let's, let's pray together. You, you telling me something? Or you just praising the Lord? Oh, wow. Okay. What's her name? Judy. And this is Brother Victor's stepmom? Okay. They, they found that uh, Victor's stepmom, they went in for gallbladder surgery and found that she's eating up with cancer. Sister Mara precious sister, we, they found that her mom is eat up with cancer. Um, but nothing's too big for our God. Amen. Nothing's too big for our God. Would you would you find some people that you can have a point of agreement with? And listen, right there in your little circle, if you've got something special you want that group to pray with you about, share it with them real quick before we before we get started here. If you've got something that you want to really ask God about, just pray God to do it. Pray God to do it. Let's bind together and pray for one another and believe for God to do His will. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Remember John Silver. They're putting a tube in his kidneys that God would touch him. This is uh, Sister Sheila's stepdad. So let's bind together and pray God to do his will. Let's go. Father, love you so much. You're a great God. And I look across this room and I see prayer cells and I see a I see agreement taking place. I see people coming together and believing for your divine will to be accomplished in lives, that lives can be changed, God. And I want to thank you that your ear is open to the cry of your people. I want to thank you, Lord, that your ear is attentive to the prayer that's being made in this place. For these that are in this altar right now, God, that are crying out and calling out to you, God, I thank you that you are hearing their prayer and they are sincerely coming before you and laying these things down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching Brother Jim. God, that this cancer was not any more extensive than the fact they just had to remove it and it's done. I thank you, Jesus. 
God, I'm praying for Tracy and I'm praying for Brother Jerry, God. As they get ready to have to go through these scheduled surgeries, God, I pray that you go ahead and do the surgery. Go ahead and work the work, God. Bring glory to your name, I pray, in the name of Jesus. God, touch John Silver today. Touch Judy today. Heal their bodies, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Heal them, God, by your mighty power. Bring glory to your name through these situations, Jesus. I saw a mom just a moment ago look at her group and say, pray for my kids. God, touch our children. There are moms and dads in here that don't know that they have the joy of knowing that their kids are serving you. But God, I pray that you would touch them right now and that you would minister to them kids, God, that you would touch their heart. Help them, oh God, to surrender to you right now in this moment. Let them understand the significance of the stone. Touch them by your power. You're a God that heals cancer. You're a God that restores hope, joy, and peace. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you take that which is broken, put it back together, and the area that was broken is stronger than any other part of the bone, God. You're a good God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. At that name, Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that you are Lord. We command every high thing to be brought down, every stronghold to be broken. God, that our families can be released, our children can be released, our loved ones can be released, God, into your kingdom. See the things, God, that only you can do. We lift them up to you, Jesus. And I want to say thank you for the good reports we're about to receive. Come on, somebody join with me and praise Him. Thank you for the good reports that we're about to receive. Thank you for the good reports we're about to receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You can leave this place today and say, well, they started 30 minutes earlier but kept us the same amount of time. Well, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I've made my mind up, folks. I've made my mind up. I've had, I've had people tell me, I'd come to your church, but you preach too long. I'm going to give you what God gives me. If, I'm, if I tell you I'm full, get comfortable because I'm going to empty myself. If God tells me to stop, I'll stop. I don't, listen, I can preach 10 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes. don't matter to me. I just want to do what God has me to do. I hope you enjoyed this message today. I hope you enjoyed this message today. I hope it was a blessing to you the way it was for me. And as these are continuing to pray, listen, uh, let these finish praying. But if a couple of men can hang around for just a few moments, I need you to help me clear this stuff off the stage, but I don't want to interrupt these that are praying. If you need to congregate, speak to somebody, please do that.